the other question I had for you was, what do we know about changes in like physiological expenditure, hydration? Um, do are there changes with heart rate? Like, what do we know about that and running in colder weather? Yeah, absolutely. Just like running in warmer weather changes all of those factors running in cold weather does. Although I think people don't tend to think about that as much as they think about running in the heat, because Mm -hmm. when you're running in the heat, you can really feel the effect of that on your on everything. It feels harder. You feel slower. You actually should slow down. But um, a lot of research has found that like around 48 to 52 degrees is about the optimal temperature for distance running. Like Mm. that's where marathons are the fastest, et cetera. Um, So once you get above or below that temperature, you actually should (coughs) adjust your paces a little bit to make sure that you're actually matching your goal effort. So we talk a lot about running by feel rather than running by pace because Usually when your coach or, you know, whatever book you're reading assigns a pace, that is like the optimal pace under optimal conditions, meaning like around 50 degrees, Mm. low humidity, no wind. And I don't know about you, Nathan, but we don't have those optimal conditions here very often. Nope. Um, (laughs) There aren't many places that do. So you've always got to adjust your pace based on the conditions. And it's important to learn how different effort levels feel. So like, what does marathon pace feel like? What does threshold feel like? What does 5k pace feel like? What does running easy feel like? Because the number on your watch is going to be different in a host of different conditions. So it's good to practice that in training because it will prepare you for races where you might have these adverse conditions, but you haven't prepared yourself for how to adjust your pace based on those conditions. And that's a huge mental shift. I think that's, I know you're, you, you coach some athletes. I get to work with a few athletes too. And I think that's one of the hardest mental shifts to do is to not call a certain run of failure if it's slower based on what you think you should run. And, um, it's harder to think of, you know, cumulative benefit of running versus like one little run. Um, you know, you, that effort based running, if you can be in a certain zone of intensity over the stretch of a year, that's mm-hmm. going to be it. What gets you the changes that you want versus exactly. one, one run to, to make or break your, your season. So uh, there is so much mental that goes into being able to run well in the winter and oh, yeah. taking into consideration the drop in temperature. The other thing I was curious if you had any thoughts about this. So in the summer, it's pretty obvious you get really hot and you start sweating a ton and you're mm-hmm. like, I need to hydrate because I am sweating everything out of my body. Um, what does it look like in the winter? Is there hydration concerns in the winter? Dehydration concerns? What does that look like? Absolutely. Well, depending how you dress, you're still going to sweat. If you overdress, you're going to sweat a lot. And in the cold weather, that can cause even more problems because when your sweat cools down, that can lead to hypothermia. But Mm -hmm. you need to hydrate when you're running in cold weather, just like you need to hydrate when you're running in perfect weather and when you're running in hot weather. So if you're doing a harder workout, or if you're doing a longer run, you probably should bring a bottle with you or plan on doing a loop so you can go back to your car and drink. Don't assume that just because it's cold out, you don't need to drink because you absolutely can and will get dehydrated. The other thing is typically in the winter, the humidity is lower. So the air is drier. So your sweat is going to evaporate faster. And that can also contribute to becoming dehydrated faster. Mm -hmm. So Don't neglect your hydration needs just because it's cold. I still carry a bottle with me on the same runs I would in the summertime. Although, you know, in the summer, if it's 80 out, I'm carrying a bottle on a 45-minute easy run. I don't really do that in the wintertime. But for workouts or for longer runs, I'm still definitely carrying a bottle. One trick um, that I highly recommend is if you're running in sub-freezing weather, 
don't carry water, carry something that has an electrolyte mix in it because that will keep it from freezing. Yeah, <laughs> it's a big deal. <laughs> that made me think of, have you seen the Barclays Marathon? Um, yes. I think it was in that or another documentary where they had all of the water set out, but it had all frozen. So it was oh, like, yeah. <laughs> well, that's not going to be helpful for anybody. No, um, no. <laughs> that's a really good point. I, I think sort of like in the summertime when it's really windy or slightly overcast, it feels like you're not going to get sunburnt. That's mm-hmm. kind of what it's like with winter running and dehydration, right. where it's almost more sneaky in that yes. you are losing your hydration without knowing it because of right. you're not feeling as much sweat necessarily because it might evaporate more quickly, like you said. Um, I think even with very cold temperatures, some of our thirst um, – like the sensation of thirst is diminished because of the colder temperatures. And so we don't feel our natural inclination to take water when we are thirsty because of the colder temperatures too. So forcing yourself to have good hydration habits, like you were talking about, can be really, really helpful. Right. Because remember, by the time you feel thirsty, you're already dehydrated. So you need to stay ahead of that feeling of thirst. And of course, everybody has different sweat rates. So if you know that you have a high sweat rate and in the summertime you have to drink bottles and bottles, you probably don't have to drink as much as you do in the summer as you will in the winter, but you still need to drink. Bottom line is you still need to drink. Yeah, definitely. So let, let's start talking. Oh, do you have something else that you want to say? Yeah. I just, one other thing about like physiological effects of running in the cold. I know so many people who have cold induced asthma Mm. and There are probably a lot of people out there who have it but don't know. So if you are an athlete, a runner, a cyclist, or whatever, who when you're training in cold weather, like when I say cold, probably below freezing, and you just feel like you can't breathe as well when you get back from your run, you're coughing or wheezing, it's possible. Again, I'm not a physician, so I'm not diagnosing you, but you could very well have cold induced asthma. And that's something that you should talk to your doctor about. Yeah. People who have that might consider when they have hard workouts to do and it's cold to do those inside. And then if you have an easier, like easy recovery run, do that outside if that doesn't affect your breathing. But cold-induced asthma is a real thing. You can have no other symptoms the rest of the year, but in the very cold, dry air, have trouble breathing, coughing, wheezing, Mm -hmm. and that very well could be a sign of cold-induced asthma. I'm really glad you brought that up. That's really helpful. 